I absolutely love fermenting feed for my chickens, even my baby chicks. And I wanna show you how to do it safely so that your baby chicks grow up healthy and strong, just like Bubblicious. Huh? <laughs> Hello friends, welcome to Chickenlandia. My name is Dahlia, I'm a backyard chicken educator, also known as the president of Chickenlandia. Raising chickens has been the best way for me to find peace and joy in my life, and I wanna help you find that too. This is Bubblicious. He is absolutely the most beautiful and healthy chicken. I absolutely adore him, and I think I owe, you know, his health partly to the fact that I exposed him to the outside. I gave him lots of healthy food. I gave him greens. I gave him healthy treats along with his food. And I also fermented his feed. I think I started fermenting it when he was like, uh, I don't know, he had been with me for maybe two days and Eber, who's also in our flock. And then I had another little rooster named uh, Bigfoot, but he went to go live with the Chickenlandia presidential advisor and he has his own flock there, but they're all three very healthy. Okay, I'm gonna put you down. <laughs> yes. I absolutely love fermenting chicken feed because not only does it save money, and it does, but it also is really good for their gut health, it's good for their crop health, it is good for their vent health, and it also helps them just with overall immunity and resilience. I have been working with scratch and peck feeds for ages, and full disclosure, they are sponsoring this video. <laughs> but they're the first ones that actually showed me, hey, look, you can ferment our feed. And they have got a raw mash starter feed that I'm gonna be fermenting today. You don't have to use raw feed. Uh, you can use crumble, but the main thing that I will tell you that is very important. So right off the bat, I'm gonna tell you this, and I'm gonna tell you a few other things. Do not ferment medicated feed. To be very honest, I just, I don't know how the medication will affect the ferment, and I don't know how the ferment will affect the medication. Today we're gonna to be using non-medicated feed, and that is what I recommend. All right, so whenever I talk about fermenting feed, I always get a comment where, you know, someone's like, all you're doing is adding water and you're expanding the feed, but you're decreasing the calories that your chickens are gonna get and that's gonna be bad for them. The process of fermenting feed is so simple, but it is through this process of fermentation where it becomes more nutrient dense the nutrients in the feed becomes more bioavailable to your chickens, meaning that they can digest the nutrients easier. Their bodies can use the nutrients in a more efficient way. They have more access to the nutrients in the feed. And then you're also putting really good, um, healthy bacteria into your chickens' bodies. So they are getting more for every bite that they take. And so that's why I really believe that fermenting feed is so good for your chickens. And it's not just adding water okay <laughs> okay so let's get started i am telling you this is so easy a caveman can do it so i have here one part starter feed this is scratch and peck starter feed it is non-gmo it is organic and it is socially responsible feed i've been working with them forever so i love this stuff but like i said you can use crumble really the mash feeds ferment the best um, I will always recommend that you start out very small. Look at how small this jar is. This is a small jar, okay? I am not fermenting that much feed. And the reason I'm doing that is whether you're using a mash or you're using a crumble, you know, you want to give yourself some time to f get the hang of the process and when you're doing that, you don't wanna waste a whole bunch of feed, okay? It's really best to make your ferment in batches and feed the whole batch when it's ready. That's why I want you to make small batches. But if you need to, you can store it in the fridge. Just bring it to room temperature before you feed it to your chicks. And also baby chicks don't eat that much. So that's why I will always recommend start out small, but especially if you're using crumble because you know some crumbles ferment better than others okay and there's some important thing I'm, more important things i'm going to tell you about that here in a few minutes okay so you have one part feed and you're going to add and i'm using a gravy boat because this recipe is gravy that's how easy it is okay <laughs> all right and i'm going to add two parts water okay 
one part feed, two parts water. And I welcome you, as you're figuring this out, to play around with these, you know, with these amounts and it, to, just to see what you like, you know, see how it ferments for you, see how the consistency is. If you want it a little bit thicker, add less water, okay? You just wanna make sure that the water is covering the feed. And then I am going to loosely cover it. You do not want to seal, you don't wanna like seal this up, okay? You have to let the, the ferment breathe, okay? So I'm gonna loosely cover it, barely covering it. It could still breathe. And I'm gonna put this inside on my counter in, a, in like an area that is out of the direct sunlight. It's like a cool dry spot. Every day I take the lid off, I stir it, and it usually takes about three days. On the third day, I am going to have the most wonderful ferment. It's gonna smell nice and tangy. It'll smell, you know, maybe like sourdough or like yogurt. It can be a little bit musky. You don't want it to smell alcoholic and you don't want it to smell like it's rotten, okay? And you will, you should really be able to tell like, oh my gosh, like this isn't good, okay? It can develop a bit of a, 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 like a film on top of it. That's okay, that's just the good bacteria. That is the process. You know, every day stir that back in. If it has mold on it, if it's like fuzzy, okay, that's not good. Now, some people will just say, oh, just remove it and then stir it. Um, for baby chicks, I really just don't feel comfortable advising that. Um, that's me. If you're somebody that ferments a lot, you might feel more comfortable with it. But for me, you know, they're, it's like they're fragile and really resilient at the same time. I don't want anything bad to happen to them, okay? So I wouldn't feed it if it had mold on it. And definitely not if it smells alcoholic, okay? Now, the thing about baby chicks is sometimes they can be very suspicious of new things. <laughs> so if they don't go for it right away, don't worry about it. After a while, one of them is going to just like try it and start devouring it. And then they will all devour it like a bunch of little velociraptors, <laughs> okay? So don't worry about that. They will get the hang of it. And speaking of velociraptors, you know, when I got my first batch of baby chicks, <sighs> Uh, you know, I made some mistakes and there are some things that I wish I would have known before I got them and now I know them and I did make a video sharing those things with my audience. I think you should watch it so you can avoid these things too. It is, of course, 100% friendly backyard chickens education and entertainment and I know you're going to love it. It's right here. Just click on it. It's right on the screen. <laughs>